Or in other words, my ability to lose weight is also impaired. So now what do we see? The person who has Crohn's disease is gaining weight even though they're not eating sometimes, okay? Or they're losing weight so rapidly because everything's just flying through them. But sometimes we'll see they'll start to gain weight in irritable bowel symptoms or syndromes and some of the leaky gut syndromes because it's inflammation. And because this whole pathway now for the metabolic heater is no longer functioning optimally, okay? When this is not functioning optimally, a whole nother system is activated, a stress system that we've talked about again and again. If we could take this off and look, we would see these two amazing paired organs in the back of this system, kidneys, and on top of those two kidneys are the adrenals. adrenals okay? The less optimally functioning is the GI system, the more that we have gut-associated lymphatic tissue, GALT, inflamed. The more GALT inflammation we have in ulcerative colitis, in Crohn's disease, in irritable bowel syndromes, the more we upregulate the adrenals and spill out more and more cortisol, causing then more systemic inflammation. Okay? So gut-associated lymphatic tissue that's inflamed impairs normal hypothalamic pituitary adrenal access or normal endocrine output or normal stress responses. So consequently the body becomes more and more fatigued or exhausted in its attempts to ward off and fight off normal stressors. Okay? And its ability then to function is impaired. So now I start to have more and more sugar cravings. I become more and more dependent on caffeine. No wonder our community is so inundated with the marketing of energy drinks, okay? No wonder we've become a nation of coffee-dependent people because we can't start our morning without Folgers in our cup, right? The best part of waking up is the only way I can wake up, <laughs> right? Even memorize his ads. Absolutely. <laughs> so... As we think about this though, can you see how all of these start to overlap and how important it is for us then to maintain the health of 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 the health. It's all integrated. And so many of my colleagues, I'll say, so many physicians try to say, well, I'm the internist. I'm the renal specialist, I'm the endocrinologist, I'm the cardiologist, I'm the hepatologist. Really? So what are we missing? The more we focus on something, our, we become so tunnel vision, narrow vision, we forget the whole person. Okay? Hooray! We killed the cancer. The man died. We got the cancer. I'm the oncologist. What does it matter? He, who cares he died? We killed the cancer. Isn't that what we were after? So for research sake, hooray, the next person we might save because we killed the cancer. So it's always a, a practice of being able to eliminate or to be able to get better research for the next time. Well, let's use all the research and put it all together. Okay. So how can we activate and heal the GI system? Probiotics are essential. Prebiotics are essential. Okay. A prebiotic comes before the probiotic. Okay. Cultured foods fermented foods. Great, great pre and probiotics. Okay? So if you're Korean, kimchi. Great. If you like kimchi, you can stand the smell, super. Okay? If you are European Scandinavian, sauerkraut, super. Is that a Eat probiotic? It up. What, what's the difference between the probiotic and prebiotic? Great question. So what came first, the chicken or the egg? The pre or the pro? You said pre. Pre, yeah. Pre comes first, okay? The prebiotic, we're going to use medium chain fatty acids and we're going to use some polysaccharides to help to feed the probiotic, okay? Pro is good, bios is life. So we're going to have good bacteria and we're going to have a feeding of that bacteria. We like to use something called galactin. It's a large tree extract, rhabnogalactones, 
works very, very well as a prebiotic. Okay? Where else works as a prebiotic? Your cultured foods. So, how many of you have learned how to make yogurts? Yeah, make them. They're great. How many of you have learned how to ferment a few foods? You've done a few kimchi, you've done a few sauerkrauts, you've done a few... Is that, com that kombucha? Is that kombucha, I'm, I'm hesitant on that because I don't know how much of the caffeine you're getting out of those teas. But I really, I really am talking more specifically about sauerkraut, kimchi, what was the one, the Spanish Cordido. name one? Cordido. 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 Not Gordido. <laughs> right? So what about canned sauerkraut if you don't make your own yet? Great. It's still okay? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, read on it. What is it made of? Cabbage, Cabbage. water, and salt. Well, and the Cordido is really easy. It's not overwhelming. Like, I'm making sauerkraut in a big crock right now. Yeah. And it, it's definitely more cumbersome than making Cordido, especially if you put it in a little jar, you let it ferment for a few days, and then you put it in And you refrigerate it. Done. It's very straightforward. Oh, it's just cabbage. No, it's cabbage, carrot, onion, oregano, salt. Easy. Pretty simple. Okay. Jen, actually, could we um, post a couple of those recipes on our website? Will you give those to Ashley? Yeah, that would be great. Those aren't trademarked yet. Um, Ashley, let's let's put a couple of those for this week's. Um, just attach a couple of how to make your own pre probiotic. I won't call it pre Fermented cabbage with a Spanish <laughs> flair. <laughs> Mexican sauerkraut. Spanish sauerkraut. <laughs> yeah, Mexican sauerkraut. There you go. It actually has a nicer flavor and it stayed crunchy. I may have had it. Yeah, it's nice. It's pleasant. Very pleasant. Okay. So a bottle of sauerkraut going to Yeah. Is okay. Absolutely. So here's another thing. I really, really suggest if you're going to eat a heavy meal, having at least two tablespoons, one tablespoon to two tablespoons of something fermented. It will aid your digestion, you will feel a lot better, and it will help your elimination. Okay? Um, My kids even eat it with their eggs. Yeah, it's great. And, and it's Once you get accustomed to it, and you, you, you quit getting the idea of, oh, that's fermented or, oh, that's sour, it actually is very palatable. Okay? So are you suggesting that you have two tablespoons of Sour some crab. fermented something with each meal? I am. Okay. Or apple cider vinegar. Uh -huh. You could use apple cider vinegar, which is a, tea, a teaspoon. Put, okay. in water. Put in a little bit of water to make it so it's not so uh, tart, because it's pretty alive. <laughs> but yes, a cider vinegar is great. Does it have to be like with mother? Can it, be it, it doesn't have to be with mother. I like it with mother because that you know has a pre pro with it, right? Okay. So, mother? yeah. So, Brad's. Bragg's is a good brand. That's a kind of thing. A, a mother. The oh, mother okay. is the, the actual start. The white. Okay. Yeah. Start. As opposed to the distilled. Okay. So, Question, the I use a little bit of sweet with my vinegar. Is that going to be a I don't think so. A little bit of stevia. Um, you know, be cautious that you're not using too much. Yeah, but any other questions over there? You? Great question. So the question right now is, should we use a probiotic that we've actually purchased, or is a cultured, fermented product enough? The answer to that is, it depends, right? Depends on the state of your gut. If you're coming in with irritable bowel syndrome, or you have bouts of constipation and diarrhea, it's not likely that you're going to be able to just do it on your own. You haven't done it on your own to this point. It's not likely we're going to get it done, okay? And usually when we look at rebuilding the gut, you have to remove the offending agent long enough that the gut can start to heal. Okay? So when we look at conditions of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, we have to remove an offending agent. Most commonly we find it to be linked to a food sensitivity. Even when they've done the scopes and they say, well, you don't have celiac disease, I would start with celiac disease. Even though it's been told you don't have celiac disease, even though the tests come back, you don't have celiac disease, I would start with treating it as celiac disease. Simultaneously looking for some type of an infection, 
looking also if there are polyps here in the GI system, which I think are high-rise condominiums for infection. We got to get rid of the infection, and then we have to give a re-inoculation process of probiotics. So yes, part of a cleanse should include a heavy dosing of both pre and probiotics. In just a day to day, if you're feeling pretty great already, the fermented foods would be great. The cultured foods would be great. Okay? Kefir, yogurt, plain yogurt that you've made on your own, super. Okay? But if you're not at that point yet, and we're doing actually this focus tonight, liver gallbladder cleanse, GI system cleanse, we're going to want to cleanse and rebuild. Okay? Re-inoculate. Feed that up again. And that can be three to six months. Let me tell you about a young man that we saw. <clears throat> this young man had been um, a missionary down in Brazil. He was there for two years, and a couple of times he got very, very sick. He was hospitalized at one point. He was so sick with an infection in his GI system. He was hospitalized for uh, several days, got out, took all the anti-infectives, came home, still had the infection. The kid was rail thin. We treated him and we treated him and we treated him and we treated him. It took us uh, almost six years to finally get rid of this infection. And then it took him about, uh, was it, it took him six months to rebuild his gut and he finally feels I'm on top of it. Okay. There is a, a Dr. Dietrich Klinghart, K-L-I-N-G, Klinghart, H-A-R-D-T, that's one, one word, clean heart. He is a German uh, physician. He practices half the time in Germany, half the time in Seattle. And his protocols for elimination and healing and such for in infections are extensive. Okay? Um, sometimes we have to resort to that. I like Dr. Karazian's protocols for healing, and I recommend his protocols very, very highly. I'm going to take this. 